Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. If you're new here, then you might not know, but every single Sunday I go ahead and upload a video with tips, tricks, strategies, a lot of time freebies that you can take and use in your K through two classroom right away. So before I dive into this video, I wanna make sure that if that sounds like something you like, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of all of my new videos. This week I'm here to share three tips for teaching math through distance learning. Let's dive in. Now when we're teaching math virtually through a computer screen, it can feel kind of tricky. Everything I've ever learned about teaching math to those elementary grades is that it needs to be hands-on, it needs to be tactile, they need to see it, they need to feel it. So we are gonna have to really think outside the box to make sure that we are reaching those youngest learners and teaching them exactly how to add or how to subtract or more about number sense. So I wanna share just a few ideas. Before I dive into the real first tip, I want to share just a cautionary tip that I've shared in a few other distance learning videos as well. And that is for all of your lessons through distance learning, I would keep them short and bite-sized. So even with math, if you are going to go ahead and record your lesson and then tell them about the activity to do, just remember that it should be short, concise, to the point, not like what I'm doing now, saying the same thing three times. And when you send them off to do their own activity, make sure that is, you know, able to be done in a short time frame as well. So something that can keep their attention and, you know, keep them engaged. But again, try to keep it short. The first tip I have for you is to really use that at home connection. Because students are at home and they have a lot more real life experiences, we should try to make our math problems and the math activities we have as connected to their real life as possible. Some things you might wanna think about are what students actually have inside their house, their home, their apartment, wherever they are living. So I shared last spring a data collection activity that's pretty easy to do. And basically in that, students would go around and count up, you know, how many outlets they have in their house or how many windows they have, different things like that. They can go ahead and make a tally chart and they could even graph it up if you wanted them to. That video looks like this and there's actually a free data collection sheet there if you wanna go ahead and grab that. If not, you can just have them go about and do that activity and then come back to Seesaw or Google Classroom and share their answers with you that way. Another fun example of this would be to tell students their job is to set the table for everybody that lives in their home and that everybody's going to need one fork and one spoon. And then their problem, their question that you're wondering is how many utensils do you need in all? So this is something students could do whether they actually physically go grab a fork and a spoon and you know put it on a table for everybody in their house. They could draw a picture of this, they could do it in their head, however they wanna solve it. But again, it's a relevant problem to help practice those different number concepts. For measurement, you could have students go around their house and collect three to five things and then put them in order from smallest to biggest. Either you're doing you know, shortest to longest, shortest to tallest, however you do it. They can go ahead and take pictures. They could draw a picture, however they're communicating with you. But really honing in on that you know, at home connection and real life problems that they can go ahead and physically touch things even though they're at home is a great way for them to continue practicing math. Tip number two is to try to make math engaging for your students. Now in the classroom, I would do this with games, games, games. If you've been following me a long time, you know I love a good math game. I have shared so many of them here on my channel. In fact, I have an entire playlist of, you know, dice and card games that students can play at home with a simple deck of cards and dice. Um, parents and teachers alike both loved my print and play games for math all, all of last year during the spring. They're very easy. I'll show a couple examples here, but it's usually just one sheet of paper that they print, so it's very low prep. And all they usually need is like a dice or a paper clip, something to spin. And again, once they already know the skill, the students, they can go ahead and just practice it in a fun way with these games. But I did add another digital component because both of those you might not be able to play with your student. And I wanted to make something that you could kind of do with them. So I created this fun digital game board and the number since one is already out and I'm working on addition, subtraction, place value, and a bunch of other ones. Let me go ahead and just show you a quick little screen share of what this game looks like here. 
So this is the game in the PowerPoint presentation mode. You can play it in PowerPoint as well as Google Classroom. And basically the way it works is students would go ahead and roll a die in real life or they can find one online and move that many spaces. So let's pretend it's four. One, two, three, four. And then this is a solve it problem. So which number matches the dots shown below? The answer we think is 16. They can't click anything on the page. The only two things they can click are this check mark button to see if their answer is correct. And after they do that, they will, so we said 16, let's check it. Correct. If it is correct, they can click below and their game piece will have moved. If it was incorrect, they go back to the beginning of the game board. So let's see, ta-da, our little spot has moved, our game piece. There's also um, the blue ones are what's missing problems. So let's pretend we rolled another four. What goes in the blank? 15, blank, 25, and 30. I think the answer is 20. Let's check it. Correct. We can keep moving. And basically students just keep going on until their game piece gets to the finish line and they have won the game. Now what I love about that game is while students could definitely play that independently on their own, it is a lot of fun for students to go ahead and play it with the teacher as well. So if you were working with a student one-on-one -on -one through a Zoom call or Google Meet, or even in a small group, you can go ahead and share your screen with the game on, and then you can also share your mouse control. So they can go ahead and roll a die, move that many spaces, and that way when they're answering the question, they're explaining it to you. Or maybe they're you know, writing down their answers or figuring it out on paper, they can show it to you. But that way you can kind of talk it out with them and it's still a ton of fun. I just actually released that last week and it's already gotten some great reviews, so I'm excited to get the other versions out for you. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. But regardless, like I said, I have all those free deck of card and dice games that students can go ahead Ahead and play and have fun with at home. Tip number three has to do with manipulatives. Now I know I shared in the first tip about using at home things. So whether you're using snacks with your students or whatever like they have at home, just grab, you know, six markers, anything to kind of represent those numbers. But I do want to let you know that there are so many free websites out there that have digital manipulatives. They have base 10 blocks, they have counting cubes, they have the little bears, they have tens frames. And so I just want to take a minute and show you a couple of those different options with a little screen share here. So this first one here is actually by McGraw Hill and you do need Adobe Flash Player. So like when you go to the website, it will actually say enable Adobe Flash and then it looks like this. So you can go ahead and select grade if you want to. You don't really need to. A lot of the stuff for, you know, pre-K through grade two are the same, but as you get up to third and fourth grade, there are some different manipulatives. So there's some backgrounds. You can do different game boards. You could have, there's different storyboards, but there's also these work mats, which are great um, for things like, there's a blank mat, of course, you know, diagrams a 10 frame, if you're looking for part, part, whole, any kind of background that you might normally use in a classroom, you can have digitally. So here there's also attribute blocks that you can use. Here's just a ton of different manipulatives for you to go ahead and choose from. Here's some dice there, game pieces, fraction tiles, connecting cubes, like I said, they're all in here for you to go ahead and use with your students. So this is a great website um, to use. I'll link this down in the description, but I wanna show you one more. And this is from the techie teacher, Julie Smith. And she actually put this together with, it's like a roundup of all these different virtual math manipulatives from different sites. So this dice one here, you can go ahead and click in my last game. I mentioned needing a die. If you don't have one, you can change the amount and then actually roll it right here on the site. Change it up to three uh, or two. Go ahead and roll it here. Let's see. They have the little teddy bears that, you know, we love to use teddy bear counters in the classroom. Taking a bit to load, but then they can go ahead and use teddy bears to count things up or do some graphing, anything like that. What else is there? There's money, um, shapes over here, different marbles. This one's in the toy theater, the marble jar. 
So you can go ahead and students can add marbles to the jar if they're using these as manipulatives. Uh, it's just, like I said, a fun way to get students to use all these tools that we normally have in the classroom, but they can use them online. So I will link this one down in the description too. All of those are gonna be linked down in the description below. Along with just keeping it simple though, I do wanna warn you that whatever one you choose, I would do a little research first and think about what one will work best for the lessons you plan on sharing, and then kind of stick with one, at least for a good month or two, so students can get familiar with using that you know, website or whatever to use their manipulatives. You don't want them going back and forth and having to learn different technology because it's already going to be quite a bit. So there are three different math tips I have for you if you are teaching math through distance learning. Just a quick recap, the first one is to really use that at-home connection and try to think of some tasks or activities that they can do that are relevant to their real life. Tip number two was to try to keep it engaging. And I have tons of things to help you out with that. Dice and card games are easy, print and play games, digital games. Keep it fun, keep it light, and try to keep them engaged in learning. And tip number three is to still use manipulatives. Even if you cannot find them and you can't do, you know, take home bags or take home kits that some teachers are doing, there are tons of digital options, so I wanted to share those with you. Everything I mentioned in this video is linked down in the description, so be sure to click show more if you can't see it all, and all the links will be there for you to click. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. And if you have any other tips for teaching math through distance learning, leave them in the comments below. I love getting teachers to share their ideas and engage in the comments, so that way we can learn from each other. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.